at Eternity's Gate, a beautiful, mesmerizing film starring Willem Dafoe as the painter Vincent van Gogh. It's a uniquely odd film, I would say. Um, a lot of that comes from the narrative structure of it. It does have kind of this lyrical quality to it, where it kind of bounces around giddily through the last uh, last few years or last year of Van Gogh's life um, as he's painting and a lot of that is how it's told because it is you have Defoe is the outright star of the film there's really no one else in it that kind of compares to him it is 100 percent a vehicle for him and it was he was nominated for an Oscar for it and you can see why when you watch the film it's about 140 minutes long before the credits hit and very interesting way in how they told it because it it's Van Gogh in essence kind of talking to himself through what happens so the perspective of it changes a lot through the film from looking at Van Gogh on the outside to looking through his eyes and seeing kind of this muted world with varying color patterns uh, vibrant yellows oranges some weird looking greens and grays and blues um, there's several instances where he has these fits that he goes into where he talks about how you know I blacked out I, I don't remember I don't know what happened and leading up to these points it's when the perspective kind of shifts and you see <clears throat> it change from uh, the normal lighting to this kind of offbeat lighting where it is either very vibrantly yellow or kind of an odd green or very cool and blue looking like when he walks outside it's you know, it's like he didn't change the color balance on the camera but you don't care because it serves as a transition from you know looking at the world and then looking th at the world through his eyes. Um, several times you have characters comment on it. Um, one of them is he plays a priest in the film and he, he's talking to Van Gogh closer to the end of it and he's like, you know why you're here? Why are you here? And they have a few, a little bit of banter back and forth uh, about scripture and kind of how Vincent is looking at his life or interpreting what's going on and why he feels he paints the way he does. And the priest points out, like, you know, this painting is it's 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 ugly, it's it's a mess, it's it's everywhere. And it's a scene of it's a landscape scene with a couple little rabbits in it. I don't know the exact painting by Van Gogh, but you can see it that the colors he's using are not natural. It's not what you would normally see. It's something that you would see in your mind's eye when you're sitting there drifting and just looking at what's there and you're like oh wow you know now I can see it in this different light as the sun kind of shifts behind the tree it shades everything or gives a shadow to it in a certain color or context and it it really does a good job in this film because you're not experiencing a straightforward narrative you're experiencing Van Gogh through Van Gogh and in it you you see him as he you know goes to these intense periods of like social isolation leading up before he cuts his ear off he runs through nature he enjoys himself he's not good with people but yet he can go out and paint for hours days on end you know looking at what is just a flat landscape Oscar Isaac plays a contemporary of him in the film and there's a few scenes of them together that are really really beautiful um, one of them is they're both setting painting two different, uh, they're both what appears to be painting the same landscape, but what you actually see is Van Gogh's painting the landscape while Oscar Isaac's character is painting Van Gogh painting. And you're able to see kind of from his eyes what he sees in Van Gogh or how he sees him. He's this torrent of energy, this torrent of color that is able to look at something and see it different than how the world sees it at the time. At one point, Defoe tells the priest that he believes that he's painting for people who aren't alive yet. And in that moment, it kind of rings true because if you know anything about Van Gogh, you know that during his lifetime, he was he was nobody. He was nothing. He wasn't really considered an artist. And they make a point in the film of people making a variety of comments to him in which they say, you consider yourself a painter? You're an artist, you, you paint this, you paint roots, you paint ugly colors, you paint horrible, awful images. How are you a painter? So it shows that, in one hand, art is an acquired taste, so to speak. Not everything that one person thinks is art, the next person will think is art. But it does kind of show some reflection in that, you know, what is done now may be looked upon different a few years down the road. 
which and the name of the film comes from the fact that he is of course pondering eternity there's several moments where he's talking to other characters and they're like well I paint so I can make it live on till eternity I can make something survive after I'm gone or when I'm not here it'll live on and that's what kind of what you see him doing he's throughout the film he seems to be trying to make an impact and live beyond his natural means and when I say natural means I mean that he lives beyond his own life um, the film it is because of the unique narrative style and structure it is in some instances a, a little hard to follow because it will just drop to a solid black screen for 15, 20, 30 seconds, sometimes without any sound to start with, before a voiceover of Defoe talking um, introspectively and kind of trying to narrow down or relate what's happening in his life to this moment. And then it'll cut over and go to one of the scenes where you're definitely inside Van Gogh's mind and he's kind of having one of these breakdowns. And this is usually where you see these very vibrant or very off-kilter colors that obviously would not be what you're normally seeing but it's what Van Gogh is seeing through his eyes as he's traveling um, through these moments of absolute hysteria where he doesn't know what's going on he blacks out you know he sees a woman he you know grabs her and it's like here stand here stand here move here but he he can't control himself so he's actually hurting the woman when he's moving in her position either way it's a it's a good film it is certainly one I would recommend at an hour and 40 minutes long before the credits. It is a relatively short film in terms of what's out there today. Um, but outside of that, it's it's one of those ones that I, I cannot recommend highly enough because Willem Dafoe does such an excellent job in playing the character. You really can feel the isolation that he, he is going through, the internal struggle, the mental struggles. And it's one of those ones where he, you can see that he knows something's wrong with him, but he doesn't know what's wrong with him. He's not ready to declare himself mad because he doesn't feel or believe that he's mad, but he has these instances where he doesn't know what happens and he is mad. Or he is or does go mad. So you're like, oh, okay. Because it is all about Willem Dafoe in this instance. It's all about him and his struggle and there's some beautiful scenes with uh, Van Gogh and his brother. So you can kind of see the relationship that's there between them, of one of a, a brother loving a brother, doing everything he can to take care and help his brother, especially when he knows he's very talented, he has a lot of potential, but there's something off or something amiss that doesn't let him realize that full potential. And um, when the film ends, you know, it does the, the standard little bit of, information about history and telling you, you know, on how, you know, Van Gogh is now considered a great artist and how his works hang here, there, and uh, how there was a sketchbook that he made in the film. And you see it's a beautiful little part that was hidden from history for 126 years and contained, I think, 65 of his sketches. And it was discovered in 2016 and may or may not have been kind of the influence on this film. They, they do take a little bit of creative licenses in terms of how they portray uh, Van Gogh's demise in the film. I won't spoil anything with it, but it is an interesting take and does kind of, I'm not going to say it gives credence to any of the rumors about his demise being something other than suicide, but it does kind of kind of make you scratch your head a little bit because we are talking about you know something that happened in 1888, 89, I'm not for sure exact year, but you know, 120-something years ago, so it does kind of have that little bit of, you know, what is history? Is history what we know is to be true, or is history what we believe to be true based upon who written it, who wrote it in this case, who had written it or who had wrote it in this case? And either way, I don't think it matters because it still ends on a very upbeat note, if it can be upbeat, because you're able to see that regardless of all the issues that he had, he was able to create many things that were beautiful, that were masterpieces, that were splendid works of arts who now have an audience that looks at it and sees it for what it truly was. And, and that is that Van Gogh was a painter. And it's one of the biggest questions in the movie. What is a painter? What makes a painter? And in the end, you find out a painter is someone who paints 
and puts their entire heart and being into it and draws the world as they see it. And you know, that's all anyone can hope for is create something that envisions the world through their eyes and put it out there for people. Again, if you get the time, definitely give this movie a watch. It is odd. It is a little bit kooky. It does kind of make you go, what, in a few sections. But overall, it is a good film that is probably one of my favorite films from 2018. Um, I just got around to watching it when it popped up on, I believe, Showtime. And I... You know, I'm, I'm glad I watched it. I, I think he did a very good job. It's well-deserving of his Oscar nomination.